What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm over here cooking dinner with hooks, rubs, and spices. Uh, B-Rob turned me on to this stuff, and i tell you what, it's great. It's a homemade blend of the finest ingredients sourced from Texas gardens, farmers, and markets. And it's some good shit. i tell you what, try the smoke and sweetness, or you can try Hoppy's favorite, the Mad Cow, which is a nice peppery slap in the face. <laughs> One taste, and you'll be hooked. Hooks, rubs, and spices. You are now listening to Random Ramblings with Rock. Yay. Yay. If you like hanging out at Walmart, if you like hanging out in the aisles, if you like talking random stuff, random ramblings with Rob. Uh, random ramblings links with Rob. Yo, yo. Random ramblings links with Rob. Walmart talking. What random? What random? 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 Rob links with Rob. 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 What up, everybody? This is your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first-time listener, I appreciate you for giving my show a try. And if you're in the vicinity of the person that recommended you to me, give them a crisp high five. And if uh, you're not in the vicinity of that person that recommended you to me, um, use your favorite social media app of choice and send them a DM. Um, don't don't get it going down in the DM because we ain't, we ain't trying to have all that going on and whatnot. But uh, just let them know that I'm appreciative of you sending them to me or me sending them to you and how how the fuck I just got on that but you get what I'm saying Uh, joining me in random fashion as per usual for this show is a man that I've come across upon Instagram a local Houston native or resident either or I'll find that out in a minute but uh, he has a fascination with uh, caps hats Lids, tops, covers, and whatnot that uh, fascinate me because I, I um, personally, I, I, I like a good uh, snapback, and more so than actually wearing snapbacks, I like to design my own. So I mean, you know, when I came across his feed and whatnot, you know, I was just like, oh man, this is somebody I need to uh, talk to, get a little bit of wisdom from, because his hat game is magnificent from what I've seen here in pictures. So uh, joining me on this fine Tuesday evening as we record, but you'll hear this on a Sunday sometime in the future. Um, Big Dave 713 on Instagram. Yo, what's, what's going-, going on, Rob? Thank you for having me on, man. Man, thank you for giving me your time. I mean, you, we, we had an exchange over the past couple of weeks or whatnot, how you was talking about the podcast gods are mocking you. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it happens like that sometimes, but I'm glad everything was able to work out and uh, we was able to fit each other in and, and, and kick it for a little while. OK, now, first question right off the top. Uh, native Houstonian? Born and raised, man. 1976. Jefferson Davis Hospital. It's what? not here no more, but, you know. Yeah. Word. All right. Because, I mean, are you all your folks from around this area? Well, actually, we we kind of a muddly gypsy kind of crew. Um, we, my grandma's side comes from Texas. My grandpa's side comes from Louisiana. I, uh, yeah, that's why I had to ask because I mean, yeah, I'm yeah we, we yeah we a little Creole, <laughs> we a little swamp. You know, we we got a little bit of everything: Rolling, Fort Jess, Manny, Natchitoches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there. I yeah, know because like when I'm hearing you talk or whatever, I mean, it it, it, it perks up. It's like my, my spider sister is a tingle. I said, like, he, he one of us. <laughs> real, neck, re, real recognized real, man. You know how it is. Yeah, for sure. But um, you, you had a question as well before we started recording. What, what oh, well, no, you, you, you had got to talk about take a swill for the working man. And I don't know, you know, if people out there know, but that's a little catchphrase by one uh, near and dear to my heart, Mr. Stone Cold Steve Austin drops on his podcast a lot. Ex- exactly. Uh, and I just heard that he's getting his own talk show on USA. So Whoa. <laughs> yes. Now, being that it's cable, I don't know exactly how much you'll be able to get away with, but I'm sure there'll be some outtakes for YouTube or the internet that'll be just aw- awesome, you know? Not, not. I-, I check his podcast out all the time. I don't know, if, like you said, if it's he's one of us, something about that Texas drawl and, and, and just the no-nonsense, ain't scared to drop an F-bomb if needed. Mm-hmm. You know, I dig Stone Cold, man. You know, plus, 
you know, I'm from Texas, man, you know, and I, and I love wrestling. So it is what it is. I, mean, I, I knew I liked you from the first time I seen your Instagram. <laughs> Because, I mean, you talking my language right now. Hey, man, you know, you, you said I have a, um, a fascination. It, I, some may call it a fascination with cats. Some may say it's 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 it's, it's a disease. All I can say is save the youth. There's no hope for me. I'm at, <laughs> I'm getting close to 800 now, and there's caps everywhere in the house. My wife, when she's absolutely had it, I'll come home and my, my recliner will be full of caps. That's, okay, honey, I've picked these up in every room. Now do something with this shit. So. You know, oh, can I cuss on you? My bad. I ain't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shit ass fuck. All right, all right good. Then we straight then, because you know, like, I was gonna say if you got to push that two second little delay, you, you you're gonna be busy, man. You know. <laughs> now, nah, man, you it's know. free for all here, baby. That's right. That's right. It's a great thing about about media like that, man. Yeah. Now, but yeah, you know, uh, uh, caps wrestling. I'm I'm die hard about my local teams. You know, I live and die Astros. That's my. My number one passion is baseball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Texans, Rockets, Cougars, Dynamo. I've even went to a soccer game. I, you know, I don't really, I don't really know all the rules. And yeah. when somebody <laughs> barely gets hit, they fall down. I don't know that from where I'm from, they'll start a fight. But hey, if it gets a, a penalty kick, then so be it. I just know that when all the essays are cheering, I'm cheering. So, oh, hey, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Usually it's like, yay, followed by a swig of your, your alcoholic beverage. But you know what? I went for the first time like two years ago, and I was amazed. They bring a band in. Like, have you ever been to a soccer game, like a real ne soccer game? Not high school, not college, like a real deal. I went to a Mexico team versus a Mexico team soccer game. Now, that's like oh. soccer to the fifth dimension. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These fools brought bands in like they walked in like like the ocean of soul was coming in there, you know, and they play <laughs> the whole game long. Yeah, it's man. 90 minute halves. They don't stop. I, I just imagine 50 essays with with Louis Armstrong cheeks just over there, just blowing hard because they, they are going <laughs> hard and it. It makes the game go like quick, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not from here. I'm from Louisiana and um, just moving here to Houston. You know, it's like the biggest place I have ever lived and whatnot. And it's just like um, I'm getting um, a little more immersed in your culture and whatnot. I mean, the music from Houston has influenced my childhood tremendously, you know, screw and all that, everything. Right. And, um, life, R.I.P. Pimp C. For sure. And um, but coming here, you know, to live here after I retired is just like I never knew how much. It was a part of my childhood and whatnot, just the music and how much. Ain't it funny how a song would take you back to a moment, you know? Yeah. And I don't mean the sentimental, like, oh, my baby being born. No. Let In Too Deep back to the hotel come on. And I immediately picture <laughs> cleaning my car before I'm going to go ride Sunday night yeah. just up and down the street. You know, like that's where it took me back to, you know? Word. I can remember what shit uh wanna be a baller come on and then oh, that, that, that's car shows. Yeah. Back exactly. in the day at the car show, everybody was playing that and tops drop. Mm -hmm. So that was chicks leaning on hoods and palas and, and, and all the little fast and furious cars was out back then, you know. Yeah. So uh but yeah, man, music and, and, and you know, I, I like I said, born and raised here, so I've went through the full gambit. From the OG original Ghetto Boys to like three different incarnations of the Ghetto Boys, and and on I mean Gangsta Nip I mean I can I can go Street Military is one of my all time yeah. favorite groups, um and and they never really got much more than local you know, mm -hmm. uh but now you know nowadays we got a couple guys that went a little mainstream Paul Wall yeah. you know I, I wish Zero would get a little more credit but I think yeah. he's a little too raw. For, for the public masses. Yeah, and I, think he, I think he's kind of happy, you know, where he is doing what he yeah, did. Yeah, you know, too much scrutiny on him. I, I think he'd just lose it. You know, he, mm -hmm. he, he'd he he be on TMZ just losing it, just just beating the shit out of some paparazzi or something, you know? Yeah. And it's just like um, not only the love that is shown by the city to their artists and, uh, and vice versa or whatnot, you know, um, freaking... Slim Thug out there just building houses and you know you doing know, all kind of crazy it's stuff. It's the truth, like man. You know, I, yeah, I, I never, yeah. I, I, you know, I never really cut for the guy. I, I you know, I, I, I ran in different circles, 
but I mean, the guy is legit. He he is he is you know you you always hear in the names in town like JJ Watt and don't get me wrong, JJ's fabulous, but there's a lot of low key guys. Trey has done so much for the community. He builds homes. He's he started after school programs for yeah. kids. I mean, it's it's phenomenal what people can really do if they take advantage of the access that they have. Mm-hmm. And that's what I feel like you're supposed to do, man. I mean, the city that made you, I mean, you put back into it. You got to give back, man. I mean, if if they were down for you when you was pushing CDs out the trunk at Carrington's, then, you know, show love, you know, because you wouldn't be where you were without those first people that were going to the shows when they were five dollars a ticket and you was begging people to buy them, you know. And it's also the fact that, like, you know, growing up here, you may not have had it all as well. So, yeah. I mean, when you're in a position to make things better, you should, you know, do those things. Exactly, man. I mean, it, 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 there's a reason why I say within the next five years, I think we're projected to overtake Chicago as the third largest city in the nation. Yeah. It's truly a melting pot down here. I mean, the, the immigrant population is high. I know. Because <laughs> I, 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 I know that because I work <laughs> And deportation. Yeah, well, that's the backbone of this of this you know community, really, man. I mean, it, it, it is truly an um, an ecosystem almost. If you want to get scientific yeah. about it, you know, it's just the way that things work out. I live in the same hood I grew up in. I actually bought the house next door to the house I grew up in, and everybody knows everybody here. My neighborhood, my side of town, I live on the southeast side of Houston, mm-hmm. right? And some people would turn their nose up to that. But when you think about I lived three blocks from a golf course, mm-hmm. but you'd never know it because you know, oh, look at, oh, now he lives up like 10 blocks from a jack in the box. Oh, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, it is where you make it. I mean, I've been in nice neighborhoods where I felt more worried about myself than walking down my own street. Yeah. And, and that's one thing that I, I give to Houston is just like there's no borders. There's no barriers. It's, it's diverse in the motherfucker because like I was living off in a uh, loose song. When okay. I when I first got here, I was living in uh, Cyprus, and that's just all kind of confusing to me because you got 1960 right there where you can see all kind of crazy shit. Then you go a couple blocks up, you got million dollar houses right next to the golf course, and then you go around the block again, you back in the hood. I'm just like, yeah, it, it is truly like that. Now I don't I don't get up. I'm from the South Side, born and raised. Like I said, bought the house next door to my house. Mm-hmm. I don't get too far north of I-10 if I don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, I just. <laughs> Ain't, ain't nothing I need up there. Last few times I ever went up there, it was a bad time. <laughs> so yeah. I don't, uh, you know, it's kind of like Dallas, Texas. You know the best thing ever came out of Dallas, Texas? I don't know. Tell me. I-45 South, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not one of these guys that, oh, well, we didn't make it, but but the Cowboys are still in it, but the Rangers, with, but the Spurs, no, nah, hell no. Nah. It's, it's Houston oh, yeah. against everybody. Fuck, I can't stand. I'm sorry. I got two favorite football teams, mm-hmm. the Houston Texans and whoever's playing the Dallas Cowboys. I yeah. mean, it's just, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I understand it. I don't like Dallas either. I mean, when I was a kid or whatever, I mean, I didn't know no better, so I, I used to like them. Well, I ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I owned a Deion Sanders Cowboy jersey. Fortunately, I destroyed all photo evidence of yeah. such. So <laughs> it is, it's, it's merely a, a myth uh, at this point. But – my grandma was a diehard Cowboys fan. We lived in my grandma's house. Mm-hmm. You were watching the Cowboys game. If the yeah. Oilers was on, oh, well, that's your ass. So, But then when the Oilers left, yeah. I couldn't bring myself to cheer for the Titans, although I loved Steve McNair, yeah. one of my one of my best friends ever. I uh, went to high school with Donald Driver, Hall of Famer, uh, oh, Packers Hall of Famer, played for the Green Bay Packers for years. Um, he went to Alcorn State, and I got to meet Steve McNair. Man, he was so cool. I still couldn't bring myself to cheer for that team. Eddie George was a Heisman Trophy winner. I couldn't cheer for him, man, because they, they stole my team. So I couldn't cheer for the Cowboys. So that's how I ended up being a Cincinnati Bengals fan. I don't know how. I, maybe it was the icky shuffle. I, maybe it was, was what was it, who dat? Who day is New Orleans, right? But who dat was, or who day? I don't remember, but. So that that's kind of that was the only time that I ever cheered for a non Houston sports team. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think back then, you know, when um Dallas was just running through everybody and everything, I think um that was well, I I I can only speak for me, but I felt like 
I wasn't like a fan of the team, but it was more so of the players on the team. Cause you know, I, yeah. I, I like Sanders. I like, um, freaking Michael Irvin and all yeah. of them. Emmett Smith and whatnot. Emmett, yeah, I cuff Emmett. Yeah. It, it was like that kind of like, and I'm sorry, I'm job, man. I jump around, dude. I don't know if it's ADD or, or what, but like LeBron mm-hmm. individually, I'm okay with LeBron. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care for any team he's been on. I've never been a heat fan, a cash fan. I like the guy. Um, I, like I said, my favorite basketball player of all time, and this may take a lot of people by shock, is Kobe Bryant. Hmm. I yeah. loved, I loved Kobe. Black Mamba, man, I was at Kobe's last game here in Houston when he just put it on us, and I was wearing a Kobe jersey and almost got ran out the building. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, I mean, shit. Michael Jordan was my dude, man. I, I used I mean, to watch. I mean, I love Mike, but yeah. I mean, as eras progressed, you know, Mike. See, the thing about Mike is back then we had really good Rockets teams and Vernon Maxwell, my man, Mad Max, would give Mike fits. Mike going to put 20 on you. Yeah. Mike Mike put 20 on you with the flu on a bad leg, you know, and owing 200 grand to a to a loan shark and still put 20 on you. <laughs> but but he wasn't going to kill you. And Mad Max would give him fits. So I always felt like the Rockets two championships run in, in 95, 96 or 96, 97. We didn't get the credit deserved because that was the Michael Jordan off years. Mm-hmm. Consequently, uh, Phil Jackson is on record saying they had nothing they could do with the King. You know what I mean? They, mm-hmm. There was nobody that, what were you going to put on him? Bill Cartwright? <laughs> you know, like there, there was nobody that was going to cover a King. So Jordan, I was, I love Jordan. I, I bought the Jersey. Mm-hmm. I had all the sneakers, but I couldn't just find myself. I cheered more for Rodman than I did Jordan that last run. Um, but just because they, they they didn't give my boy the Rockets the credit, man. We ran through. We beat the top four teams on that second run and then swept Shaq and Penny in the finals. We don't get no credit. Now, let me, let me tell you a Michael Jordan story or whatever. Because, I mean, that was my dude, man. I, I used to – when I was the heaviest in the basketball is when he was playing. So when he left right. to go play baseball for a little bit, you know, did the Space Jam movie. Then he came back wearing the 45 or whatever. I was in middle school, I believe. Okay. And damn, um, <laughs> last day of school. I don't remember what grade I was going to after, but I think it was either my eighth grade year going into my ninth grade year. You know, so leaving middle school, going into high school and shit. So we went somewhere to where they did custom jerseys and whatnot. And they had. Uh, like a Bulls, uh, short set. It was the jersey top, the, uh, the pants uh, bottoms. Yeah. Okay. And, um, they had the F- Bulls 45, but instead of Jordan on the back, I put Robinson, which is my last name. So, you know, I go to school and, you oh, know, he was killing them. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to school and, you know, he just came back. He just started wearing the 45. So all they see is the Bulls jersey 45. Or whatever. Don't give a shit if Robinson's on the back. It's just yeah. Chicago yeah. shit. So yeah. last day of school, I'm I'm going home. You know, I didn't catch the bus. We was um, gonna ride back on bikes and shit. Motherfuckers ran up on me, tried to uh-huh. jump me and take my shit. Got my name on it, but because it was Chicago and Jordan. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Tried to take my shit, man. I was just like. Oh, oh this, this how it is. But luckily, I got away unscathed. I mean, I got, I took a couple lumps, but you right. know, I got out of there. But with yeah. your, with your clothes and your dignity. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, I mean, even to expound upon that story or whatever, I doubt if he hear this shit or not. But I don't give a fuck if he do because he knew he was wrong for that shit. So, my nephew, which in my family is weird for me because I'm the last of eighteen kids. Oh wow! So. I'm in middle school and you know, all my brothers and sisters ahead of me, they done fucking lived their lives, had kids, their kids on the verge of having kids at that time or whatever. So, I mean, they way ahead of me in the age bracket or whatnot. So my nephew who is in high school, cause he's older than me. <laughs> um, we were riding together. I was riding on the handlebars of his bike and, um, we going back to my house. He's going to give me a ride. And one dude come running on the side of the bike. On my right side. Uh. And then another dude on the left side riding on the bike. Now, this motherfucker is big as fuck. Like, he in high school, six foot something. Yeah. Pushing 
pushing 300 some pounds. This, this is a big motherfucker, right? Here, old lineman, for yeah. sure. So these cats run up on the side of me. I was like, shit, I got from, my fam got my back. So this motherfucker leaned forward, whispered in my ears, like, if they jump you, I ain't helping you. I was like, what the fuck? And that was when the first lick hit me. Bow! Fall, ah. off, fall off the bike. Motherfuckers, you know, hit me and shit or whatever. And, you know, I'm pushing them off, trying to get them off of me and everything. And uh, he grabbed my jersey because they pulled it off of me. And then um, one of my mama friends came up in her car and she seen me. And she's like, come on, get in the car. So I get in the car and then he throw the jersey in the car at me and shit and we drive off. So, yeah, sore subject. You know, I see this motherfucker, you know, occasionally when I go home and visit oh. family and shit and I'm just like, yeah. If Thanksgiving, it's going to get talked about if it's my house. Hey, man. I don't even I don't even bring it up. I mean, I bring it up here because, I mean, that's years removed. I don't give a fuck oh. now. But, like, when I see that motherfucker, I'll be like, hey, what's up? I'm an asshole like that. I ain't <laughs> holding a grudge, but I'm going to forgive you, but I'm going to let you know I ain't never forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. for sure that's my my cousin shot me with a bb gun every time i see his ass i make him touch my leg you feel it feel it motherfucker it's still there feel you, it feel you it right did there it. You i'm gonna die of lead poisoning because of your ass right there <laughs> and that shit happened 30 years ago man yeah man shit i mean elephants never forget man shit i don't care how i don't i like <clears throat> i have never been one to live my life and think man i wish i'd have said this mm. now i said a whole lot of times i wish i didn't say this but, yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to let it fly. Hold on a second. We got Astros update. We just scored two in the fourth, took the lead four three over the shitty Cubs. All right. Good. Farewell. Now, uh, you, you know, we talk about team solidarity and there that and the freaking, uh, you know, sticking with what you know, who you know, who you represent. You know, I'm from Louisiana. So, you know, as of coming of age, like I was talking about, you know, any team from Louisiana is my team as to where any Texas team is your team or whatever. So. Right. Louisiana don't have a professional baseball team. So upon moving here and seeing that it's the only ever professional baseball team, you know, ba- baseball game that I ever been to was the Astros. The Astros are my adopted baseball team. You know, all them, forget all them other ah. motherfuckers. You know, Rockets, you know, since I live here, you know, I'm not totally against them now. You know, if they succeed, you know, cool. But if they're playing the Pelicans or whatever the fuck, I was like, you can kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and I can respect that. I, I can. I got no problem with that, man. Um, plus, like, like you said, how all the teams in Louisiana your team, you didn't have that one market like I did in Houston. If I lived in El Paso, well, then, yeah, I might like the Cowboys and yeah. the Spurs and, you know. But I'm in Houston. I had everything I needed right here. Exactly. You know? I mean. <laughs> but I will say this. It's chic to be an Astros fan now. I was there those years when we was losing a hundred games, and yeah. I don't mean in Minute Maid. I mean in the dome. In the dome, I mean yeah. A long time ago, when that cavernous building was empty as hell, when nobody was going. Yeah. You know, before we we drafted Bizio and, and traded for Bagwell, and before Caminetti and Derek Bell. Oh, love Derek Bell. Yeah, one of the most unsung Astros ever. Um. But yeah, man. So it kind of, it kind of, it's a double edged sword. I love seeing all the orange around town. I love mm-hmm. seeing all the love, but I hate seeing ticket prices jacked up to the point where real fans can't get into the game. Yeah, you know, Is they it- they do these um, and, and I shouldn't even be bad mouthing my team like that. But they do the you know the bobbleheads and stuff. Yeah, and I swear to God, every game I go to, I see at least three guys, three or four guys that have ten tickets each. They walk in, they get the bobblehead, and they leave. Don't even watch a pitch, you know, like that. Uh, yeah. that, that that's just one of those. What was it? What did Peter say on uh, Family Guy? It just grinds my gears. You yeah. Know? <laughs> See, yeah. You know, I, I feel where you're coming from in that aspect or whatever, because, I mean, the Saints, you know, uh, motherfuckers would go to games wearing paper bags on their heads. You yes. Know? The Aints. I remember those. Yeah. The Aints. I followed the Saints a little bit because my beloved Earl Campbell Went over there um, in the, in the at the twilight of his career, and uh, so did Bum. So yeah. I, I kind of I cut for him. Uh, but yeah, man, I remember seeing the fans and with the bags over their heads and the ain'ts and you know. But it was a good thing after Katrina. I you I almost just knew that they were going to win that Super Bowl, man. You know, it just had to happen. You know, kind of like the Astros yeah. in the series that year. Exactly. Just every once in a while. The stars align and shit just has to happen the way it happens. Yeah. Or it can just be rigged for a feel good story. <laughs> hey, you know what? I used to say that and then the Astros won it in twenty seventeen. Now I'm giving shit. 
we're the 2017 world champs. Exactly. If you can see on video, I'm pointing at the rings and the caps and all that right now. So yeah, um, and a little, I, I do a little amateur podcast myself on mm-hmm. a couple of Facebook channels and stuff. Mm-hmm. And every show opens, and I tell them that I'm from Houston, home of the 2017 world champion Houston Nationals. Mm-hmm. Every show, every show, open and close, home of the 2017 world champion Houston Nationals. I will live on that victory. I don't care if we don't win another one as long as I exactly. live. Exactly. We the World Series champs of 2017. Yeah, 2009 for me. You know, I, you know it, it was just that. It's just like when I was like, it happened in my lifetime. So Exactly. I, you know, I, I don't we care. didn't have to wait till we were fucking old like the Cubs fans and the Red Sox fans, you know, mm-hmm. ha- had to wait 80 fucking years. I, I don't know if I could have made it, man. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what was funny about that, because like, you know, living in growing up in Louisiana or whatever, you know, I had friends that were Cowboys fans and you yeah. know, Green Bay fans and all these other teams because, you know, the Saints suck so bad. Yeah, when, you, when your team ain't good, it's easy to look elsewhere. You know, and, I, you know, I stuck with them when I, you know, was coming to age. You know, this is my home. This is where I lived and grew up and was born in. So, I mean, why aren't I, you know, representing these teams? So, I mean, I just stuck with it. I mean, even if I didn't watch all the games, but, you know, I, I wear the gear, you know, I, I represent for my state. But, yeah. damn, when they was going to the playoffs – damn near had that undefeated season oh yeah and all this other shit i seen so many of these motherfuckers that are always touting san francisco and the cowboys and all these other motherfuckers just kind of trying to creep back in and i can remember vividly being on facebook be like hey motherfuckers yeah i, I don't want to hear none of y'all talking about yeah we did this shit because none of uh, y'all was here i was throwing the flag immediately on the bandwagoners like yeah you can come along but I don't want to hear like, oh yeah, we did it. I've been fat. No, 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 no. Just go on and admit the 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 tag on your shirt is brand new, sucker. You just bought it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I remember the uh, I remember the day they won. It was like, yeah, we did it. I was like, you ain't did shit, motherfucker. Take your ass back to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. You, you tuned in as soon as the Niners got knocked out of the playoffs. Yeah. Which was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a- after Steve Young, it was pretty bad. In mm-hmm. the bay, there, man. That's why they. That's why they all up on Steph and all them. Which, hey, g- go Raptors. Yeah, God damn, somebody beat the Warriors, please. I, I, I'm. That's what I'm waiting on. See, um, my old lady, um, around the time um Curry and them won their first championship, or whatever. That's when she started getting into basketball, and uh. then she, you know, adopted Golden State as her team because damn of uh, Aisha Curry. You know, oh, she, yeah, she, you know, yeah. she cook and do all this other womanly shit that wives do. So she felt gravitated toward the Warriors because that's the team her husband played for. So the, and then that low life motherfucking KD goes there. Oh. oh, you sorry bastard! That's you know what that's like. That's the basketball equivalent of Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt <laughs> had this fine ass wholesome motherfucking Jennifer Aniston. Mm. I mean, fine. Everybody wanted her. Friends. Everybody, the girls got the haircuts. The boys wanted to hang with her. The girls wanted to drink wine. Mm-hmm. And then he left her for Angelina Jolie. You selfish motherfucker. You, you know, I even. Selfish bastard. I even go down Robin Thicke and Paula Patton. Oh, 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 oh. God. Yes. Dog, what the fuck was he thinking, man? He, oh, he, did you hear? He's singing the blues, or he was. You know, yeah. he he got feeling real bad. Hell yeah, he he named a whole album after her and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Adele shit. You know, mm-hmm. I heard Adele got divorced here last like two months ago. Oh fuck, she'll have three Grammys next year. She gonna sing her ass off about this. Oh hell yeah! I'm telling you, Robert Thick, that boy. But he knew he fucked up. Oh hell yeah! Immediately. He and it was just like I mean I talk about it all the time when it's, when a topic like this come up because like. The circumstances around them breaking up was like ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah. basically, she was down to have threesomes, and that's what they was doing. As long as it was just though her, him, and the other person they choose. So basically, when they wasn't in that uh, you know, that that zone of comfort, you know, all three of them together, he was stepping out with the side chick. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong you with selfish you? Selfish bastard. You you had all the ice cream and cake you wanted 
and you know you you had the fucking ice cream factory yes you, you had the fucking truck parked in the garage you had the dairy cow out back like you had it all son and, and he wanted the fucking the the, the, the jello pudding skin the top <laughs> he just wanted to lick the cover and it wasn't and even shit. the real jello it was like the the, the h-e-b the walmart brand jello you know not 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 knock a walmart i know yeah. where i'm at here yeah, yeah. Rock. i but, got you <laughs> you know it's it's not a it's not an off brand it was it's you know it's it's uh you're breaking my heart man I don't, anyway I let's don't. let's move on because yeah, it makes me sad every time yeah 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 i mean talking to somebody who's had you know two marriages we just ain't we you know we i'm nobody to be oh. giving anybody advice oh, yeah yeah i'm on number two as well <laughs> you know i kissed a lot of frogs to find a princess i got now so you know i'm out i uh, i'm blessed yeah but um let's kind of rewind back to the beginning or whatever. One of the main reasons that we here having this chat right now is because of uh, your lid obsession, man. Yes. So uh, when when did that start for you? How, how did it just become you know, a thing for you? I wish I had some really wonderful, colorful story um, about how I did. I've, I've been a fan all my life. I got a cap as a gift it it must have been maybe 88 it was a it was a dodgers fitted okay mm-hmm. it was a gift i had one cousin who would wear fitteds but he was one of those guys who would buy a cap and wear it until it wore out and he'd buy another one you yeah. know mm-hmm. so i made a comment man i like that hat you know there's nothing in the back and and he's the one who actually introduced me like hey this is called a fitted hat it's what the pros wear blah 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 so he gave me a dodger hat so Sorry, Astros fans and my boy Deuce, you're going to love hearing this. My first fitted was a new era Los Angeles dollar Dodgers fitted cap. Yes. <laughs> um, but from there, I really didn't start collecting them until basically I had my own money. When, yeah. when I graduated high school and, and had a job, um, a little bit of history here, Spike Lee commissioned new era to make him a red new york yankees hat mm-hmm. okay uh, the what's what now are called fashion caps didn't exist back then it was the caps that was on field and, and that was it so um as far as professional teams you know not now you know different labels and stuff would have their hats made with their logos and whatnot but you couldn't find a red Yankees hat. You couldn't yeah. find a black Astros hat. You know, mm-hmm. Spike Lee reached out. They made it. Okay. Well, after that, a plethora of Yankee caps came out, and that was the only other cap you could get a bunch of colors in. Yeah. Well, back then, being a sneaker guy, I thought it was pretty dope to have a different color hat for all the sneakers. So that's where it kind of got into. I started picking up um, Yankee caps and, and, and such. Um, and then I stumbled into a lid store. Actually, it may have been called something else back then. This is how long ago it was. And, and please don't crucify me, uh, lids people. I, I don't know what it was called before then, but, and I just saw all these caps and just from there, man, I, I, I don't even know. I couldn't pinpoint and tell you when it, it became, I'm sitting in a room right now in my house dedicated to putting all my hats in. You know what I mean? I like, <laughs> if you had told me that 20 years ago, I'd have told you you was fucking crazy that, you know, I have 800 caps in here. I have full displays from New Era. I have a whole set of NBA mini fitted caps. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's just blown me away. The biggest thing that I could say that helped me, I joined a, a, a uh, Facebook group called Team Fitted. I was asked to join. Um, and from there, I kind of realized that the culture was bigger, that there was a culture, I, I could say. Mm-hmm. And and I had access to stuff that I never did. I met cats from all over the globe. And out next thing I knew, I'm picking up caps, caps from Japan and Germany. And it stopped being about quantity, and it's more about quality. quality. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I want to pick up, like, oh, I got... I got a, 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 a right now. I'm trying to collect all the Japanese baseball teams, like just just to do it, you know. Um, but but stuff like that. And then of course, I started collecting like Astros caps. And then yeah. when the fashion caps blew up and they started making different colors and different this and that, I wanted them all. I mean, it, it was worse than Pokemon. I had to have them all. <laughs> um, and then I stumbled into like a Ross store, you know, a discount Ross store. Yeah. And they're selling fitteds in there. For like six ninety nine, 
I'd go in there and drop two hundred dollars. The wife hear me drop two hundred dollars, <laughs> and, and you know, come home. And now I got a whole basket full of non Houston caps and stuff. And then, um, I noticed that there were like custom caps. Like, man, well, I don't know what this logo. What's this team? Oh, that's a custom cap that so and so made. So from there, I got in. I got hooked up with the right people, and I have now designed produced manufactured and sold two of my own caps called the space city moonwalkers oh word that's that yeah. one of the ones you're wearing now i'm wearing it right now this is actually version two um space city moonwalker got the sc um it was actually a brainchild of my old man my old man loved uh, my stepdad is what i call my old man loved the space program and yeah. would take me to nasa and just on a whim when i was Given the idea about designing a cap, I, I you know I started thinking about a, uh, an astronaut playing baseball, being here in Houston, you know, and then kind of started thinking about my old man, and the idea just went from there. Um, hang on a second, I might be able to find the original one. Excuse the dead air time, dead air, dead air. I didn't have like two weeks to prepare for this, but anyway, <laughs> um, this right here. Is the Moonwalker o, what I what is affectionately called the, the OG, OG hat? <laughs> That's the OG. Um, okay. So got yeah, the, that crescent moon in the back. So, what yeah. I didn't tell nobody when they ordered it until they got it: the Moon Man, the eyelets, and the New Era flag are all glow in the dark. Oh word! Uh, so like, yeah, that was a little secret and kind of blew up. This cap's really sought after now. Uh, there was fifty-one pieces of this cap sold out it was all pre-orders and there was 65 of this one Word. so i'm planning to do a re-release soon i am going to swap the uh back logos just to keep the integrity of the og and this one you know the the limited numbers okay um it kind, and they yeah. kind of i'm looking at them they kind of play off each other like you got the one hitting the comet and then you got the one catching the ball so it's kind of you know you, you caught that okay so yeah now uh, my idea for version three when i'm ready to release it i'll, I'll tell you what i'll give you a, a sneak peek when i'm ready word um but yeah okay so he's throwing the ball he's hitting the ball so you know i got a couple ideas for the third one um, but before then, I've actually uh, decided to go in another direction just because I have an idea so grand for the third cap that I need to make sure that production wise, it could be pulled off in a way that I'd be happy with putting my name on it. You know what I mean? Um, these came out so good. You know, the details yeah. in them, you know, they came out so nice. I even put the Kelly green under this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I wouldn't want to regress. You know, it's all about getting better than the last one. You know, it's the evolution of the moonwalker, as you would say. So until I can be sure that my idea can be pulled off or modify it, I've decided to release what I call the moonwalker remix editions. Mm -hmm. um, I've reached out to a handful of pretty well-known artists, um, especially in the cap game and given them carte blanche with the, the moonwalker idea. Basically, um, you put your own spin on an astronaut playing baseball, however you want. The uh, the first release of such is going to be something that we're calling the Moon Reaper. Um, it's a collaboration with a fella named Tony Ross. I don't have his cap here, um, but he's done some really uh, on Instagram. He's the Gorilla Strader. A little plug there for my man. Um, does phenomenal stuff, and this cap's going to blow people away. It's going to be a Halloween release. So that'll give you a little hint of what it looks like. Word. Um, but yeah, uh, there's right now I've got four artists committed um, to, to submitting designs and, you know, going with me and we'll do this as a collabo. Um, I'm not at liberty to say the other three names at this point because a couple of them are pretty high profile and, and I got to make sure that the people they're associated with are okay with it. So, but yeah, big news coming out of the moonwalker camp, man. So, um, like I said, that was just a bonus of getting into the hat culture, man. And, and I'm glad I did. I'd never would have thought in a million years that I'd have my own cap designed. You know, this is my brainchild and it's, it's not post-production y'all. It's not stitched through the buck ram here. Okay. It's not something you can go get. This was done at the factory. Now, granted, was it a sweatshop? 
Probably. <laughs> Did a 12 year old stitch this under horrible working conditions? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Now, um, now, now, when you say you got that commission and you got it done and whatnot, uh, you had to. So how did that come about? I mean, did they reach out to you or just the circle that you was running in? The circle I was running with put put me in contact with the people I need to be in contact with. To be perfectly honest, I don't want to disclose too much exactly about that. It's 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 only because new air is making it extremely harder and more difficult for us to get customs made. Yeah, Um, they see that we're making waves and they don't want us making profit. Actually, my caps aren't for sale. The caps are free if you make a donation to the uh, Space City Moonwalker Fund. You mm-hmm. see how I do that there? That's um, right. And it, yeah, it's a charitable donation. Pro, pro uh, a portion of the of each proceed goes to a charity, and it is all five hundred one c, and it's all it's public. But you know, I make sure I do it right. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just got to kind of submit an idea. Every drawing has to be approved by New Era. So if you go in there with a with a copyrighted logo or a pre-licensed logo, you're not going to get approved. You know what I'm saying? If you try to sneak in, um, I actually tried to try to do a, a, a fix it Felix hat. I don't know if you, yeah, yeah. it. So wreck it, Ralph, mm-hmm. he wore a blue fitted with FF on it. I'm like, that's dope. I'm going to make one. And they shot me down. I tried to tell him it was for a, a senior league fan, uh, softball league and they didn't buy it. So, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Cause, um, I'm looking b- back through some of your hats or whatever, man. It's just like um, the welcome to the fabulous to fabulous Houston, like the oh that the Vegas shout out style. to my boys at Sneaker Summit, man. Uh, Ralph um, hooked me up with that. He's like Dave, I got a cap and I know you're gonna want it. It's an older cap, but it, it's a play on the the Vegas the sign. Vegas welcome sign. And as soon as I saw it, I had to have it, and it actually worked out really good. I did a shot. If you go to my Instagram at Big Dave Seven One Three, go give your boy a follow. Um, I found a spot by my job where I could see the background of Houston. I don't know if you're looking at that, but I lined up the welcome to Houston and I put all the, the Houston sports teams behind it. So, you know, I like doing stuff like that. I, mm-hmm. I usually drive around with 12 to 20 caps with me in my camera and there's a lot of graffiti and, and, and murals and all types of yeah. street art that just sometimes it, it hits me. And I say, man, this looks good, you know? And, uh, that, that's what I try to do. Find a nice looking shot. Um, I am I am a a um, influencer with New Era, so you know they always like it if if I can post some shots and promotional shots for them, you know. Now, but, now this um the old school uh, the Colt forty fives hat you got that one or are you lurking for that one? <laughs> I'm I'm okay. So I didn't want to go out and just get a Colt forty fives hat. That's easy, mm-hmm. okay. I have one that I got from the stadium a couple years ago, um, but I saw a couple of design flaws that just, I'm a stickler for, if you're going to re-release a hat, make sure it, it's, it's, it's right. Yeah. You know, era wise, not, I didn't care about materials, but the stitching it. So what I'm looking for now, I've been hawking through eBay is to find an original, uh, 45 cap, you know, with the leather, with the leather sweatband, old school, old, old. I'll probably have to get like a seven and three quarters because they were so sized differently back then in order to fit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I do now. If I find a hat that I want, I I, I want to find something that's different, you know, that, that 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 will set it apart. I'm not just anybody anymore. I'm Big Dave Seven One Three. I'm the hat guy. I mean, <laughs> if I I can show you. 200 bullshit caps from ross but that doesn't impress nobody you know it ain't about impressing nobody but to me if if i'm gonna be known for something i want to be you know i want to represent right yeah i got you yeah um, man you got the the thor hat here oh i got a whole let me see here um superhero hats i love them the thanos one is crazy <laughs> oh yeah the thanos big face that was a killer i wore that to uh, infinity wars here's the thanos um, it's got the Infinity Stones. Underneath. Oh yeah, I see it now. Yeah. Oh man, it's crazy. You know, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I love the Thanos. This right here is actually one of my favorite caps ever. This was gifted to me. Um, in the group I'm in, we do a Secret Santa thing where we draw names and somebody will send you a hat or whatever. This is the uh, Doctor Hank McCoy, the Beast cap. Oh snap! 
it's frocked. You know, it's furry. Yeah. What is that, velvet? <laughs> what is that? Velvet, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, it's got a couple of the Beast characters under there. Oh, man. It's got the whole the formula that turned them into Beast. Um, what I love about this cap is, I don't know if I can get it in here. It was a sample cap. These oh. are extremely hard to find. Oh, snap. Yeah, these are, are caps that are made one or two of. Um, they're usually all a seven and a half, and it, it is made by New Era, and it gets sent out to whoever approves it for, like, in this case, it would have been Marvel. Mm. Um, and they'll look at it and say, no, we want blue stitches instead of this, or we want this instead of this. Mm. But, yeah, that in the hat community, you find a sample, that's always a good thing. So, I mean, it's not for sale. You kind of got to know somebody who knows somebody. And uh, that's the kind of shit I like. You know, I want the, uh, you know, the, you know, I, I want to be, you know, legit. You know, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm searching for a word that I yeah. can't find. But like, here's another sample um, from superhero. Oh, the, the Wolverine. OG. That's crazy. Yeah, Wolverine. It's got the advan the um, adamantium little rim there. It's got Wolverine with the sheen. Oh but yeah. Then, you can see also that's also a sample so that's pretty dope um stuff like that man i, I enjoy it and just trying to find the hard to find stuff these right here are probably the most expensive caps i own or if not one of this is the first cap that started the big face caps every cap that you see like this now okay yeah um yeah. spider-man mm-hmm you know, Rocket Raccoon. They're all called Big Faces. Well, this was the first one, and it came out with the original Iron Man movie. Yeah. Okay. This is the first one. It's original. Um, I got this from a buddy in Germany who sold them to me. This is a um, and I got it as a set, and what really stoked me, I mean, I love that cap, but was able to, I was able to grab the War Machine, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So, you know, and that black, that black vinyl, you know, it's got War Machine in the back. It's got them in the side. See right there. Yeah, like these, these are what got me into the superhero caps. Um, I don't have a whole, whole lot, but I I buy these by, you know, like, I, by the eye, you know, like, okay. I don't really wear them a lot. They're kind of like this. These will never, this will, you'll never see me wearing this out, you know. Yeah. I'll put it on for a shot or something, but A, I live in Texas yeah. and it's final and yeah, that shit ain't happening. Mm -mm. But plus that I, I just melt to your head. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It, it, it'd be horrible, man. It'd be like a, one of those temporary tattoos or something. You'd come off and all the shit be on your head from the inside. Yeah. You, see, you got a fucking Andy Warhol hat. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Andy. Uh, let's see here. This, this this right here. See, if you get you got me opening the wardrobe here. That's where some really good stuff is. Right here. Let's see. Oh, Andy. There's the Andy Warhol. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Based on his iconic um, painting. It's got a little self portrait on the inside. Everybody loves money. Yep. Yeah, I like this cap, man. I don't wear it too often. I'm actually trying to find. See, I ain't balling like that to buy a real print, but a replica print of this painting. It's four, you know, it, it, where they're all like monocolor, different colors. Yeah. I want to find one of these and like shadow box it with this cap. Um, another gem here in this plethora would be this. This is my latest pickup from Japan. Um. It's an artist in Japan, and, and I'm going to brutalize his name, so I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, my apologies. But this dragon Sakura hat, oh, oh yeah. my God. I wish that the camera would do justice to the details in this stitching. Yeah, just like the See, uh, old school Yakuza tattoos and everything. It's, it's exactly. It's a Yakuza. I have... Uh, I'd gotten this one previously a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. That's almost like the Ed Hardy joints. <laughs> exactly. And that, that's kind of got me off of it. But then I saw the dragons. And then what really sold me on this one, look at that gorgeous shit. Oh, yeah. It's all, oh, man. Looks like the old school tattoos. You know what I'm saying? The old Sailor Jerry tattoos and yeah. whatnot. Um, 
The only problem is, is that with shipping and everything, this hat cost me about 120 US bucks. Yeah, I ain't gonna say. Yeah, it, uh, I gotta find a new Japanese plug. So if anybody <laughs> out there is in Okinawa or if you're a Marine stationed over there, holla at your boy. I'll pay a finder's fee. You know, whatever. Now um, I'm looking at most of these. I mean, the majority of these are new era hats. I mean. I- are all the ones you have newer or do you have any non new era hats? Okay. The last time I counted hats, I was at 740 plus um, of that 730 or new era. Okay. Roughly. Um, I own one Michelin nest cap and that's only because when I bought it, new era wasn't making dynamo caps. They weren't making caps for major league soccer yet. Mm -hmm. Um, They are now, so I've since replaced it, but I still have it. And then I get a couple of gift caps that uh, if my grandma gives me a cap, I ain't giving it away. I ain't throwing it away. It just gets put up. 47 brand, you know, the dad hats and whatnot. A few snapbacks. Like like this one, it's it's a damn Velcro back, okay? But... I got this when I won a trip to WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, and it's got my boy Rusev and Lana and yeah. R-Truth and a couple of autographs on it. Howard Finkel signed this, old school wrestling guys there. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. now what's, weir- what's weird about all this or whatever, um, you frequent a lot of places that I've been, but you know, I didn't even know it. So uh, just to work backwards, most recently – I was at Comic Palooza. You were at Comic Palooza. I was barf. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, had I had you known what you was looking for, you probably seen me. You probably walked yeah. right by me. Yeah, because I was there all three days. Yeah. See, I, I, I at forty two, I'm not, I'm not putting that makeup on for three days. We're not, we're not doing it. <laughs> I have total respect for the ladies out there. I, I had one little spot on my eye, and it was the most uncomfortable thing I do all year. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody but, seemed to be hitting you on the foot too. <laughs> Well, you will see that that was a new prop this year. Okay, so this is like the third year that I've been barf the mog from uh, Spaceballs lore, um, <clears throat> and I found a wig and it matched good. I've got the jumpsuit. I manufactured a tail. It looks great, um, but I got kind of bored with it, so I didn't even dress last year. And me and my daughter go, and she kind of got upset with me, like, "Dad, you know what the hell? You're slacking. People were expecting to see you. You're like a Z-list celebrity." <laughs> Well, when she told me that, she pumped my head up. I'm like, oh, yeah. All right. So then I'm trying to think, what can I do? And so last year, I started manufacturing the flat foot from when, of course, Lone Star dropped the statue of yogurt on his foot when he was trying to learn how to use the Schwartz. Yeah. Um, and that was a total hit this year. People loved it. I had people come up to me this year for the first time like, I'm so glad you're here. I've taken a picture with you two years in a row and this yeah. and that. And so... I'm working on a new costume for next year um, already, and I will be going, if not all three days, definitely two days. So we need to hook up next year. We'll maybe do a live little podcast joint there or something, man, you know. For sure. And to go back a step further from uh, Comic Palooza, Elimination Chamber. I was there as well. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, if I could go to any wrestling local, I'd go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Elimination Chamber, The Raws. Um, Smackdowns. Uh, I even go to Booker T's Reality of Wrestling out in Clear Lake, man. You yeah. know, now um, see that that they kind of piss me off because, like, I mean, nothing against them really, but it's just a thing with me. Anytime they have a show down there that I really want to go to, something happens to where I'm out of town or something is scheduled to where I can't yeah. go to that motherfucker. I've made two shows the whole time, and and I, you know, I, I really try, and it's just something always yeah. like, damn it, you know. Yeah, because uh, um, Kiara Hogan was on this show, and every time she come down here, I want to go to the show, but I'm always fucking gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so, I'm a yeah, key- man, I, I love my wrestling, bro. I, I I grew up. My old man used to take me to the old Sam Houston Coliseum here in uh, Houston, and I'd watch old Houston wrestling. Paul Bosch. Back then, it was it was a mid south territory, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Bill Watts bought it, and it became the UWF later for mm-hmm. my wrestling geeks there. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just grew up loving wrestling. I, my mom loved wrestling. She would drive me all the way to Denton to go see the Von Erics. Mm-hmm. Um, 
We actually, my mom was actually crazy enough that she hit Michael Hayes with an umbrella one time because she thought <laughs> he was hurting Kevin Von Eric. Literally hit him so hard she broke it over his back. And the security guy was really nice. Said, "Ma'am, you can't do that. Please sit down." You know, and I just thought my mom was the coolest thing because she smacked Michael PSAs with an umbrella. Um, but yeah, and it just kind of blossomed from there. Um, of course, I was big into it in my high school years. That was the Attitude Era. Stone Cold, The Rock, Mankind getting thrown off the hell in the cell. Like yeah. it just that was the I wouldn't say the golden age of wrestling because I'm kind of old school. I like I like it a little bit older. O- old rage to wrestling to me is 605 TBS, man. They come on in 605. It was a nature boy, you know, um, Arn Anderson, the four horsemen, Magnum TA, the road warriors. Like I liked that wrestling WWE, WWF was always too campy for me. Yeah. You know, I didn't really care for the characters and shit. Um, back in the day, uh, I, I was a semi Hogan fan, but I loved Hollywood Hogan a lot better than the immortal Hulk yeah. Hogan. Um, and yeah, so we would go to wrestling every Friday night. And then when I get, like I said, it all, it all changes when you get your own money, yeah, when you yeah. get out there working and you, you have your own, what they say, expendable income, exactly. you know? Um, and so, yeah, we were going, I've been to five WrestleManias, five times, five times, five times, five times, five times. <laughs> time. Now, like, you, you, now we even back up another step. You was in uh, New Orleans. I was in New Orleans. <laughs> Just recently, this last one. Exactly. Oh man. How how do we not run into each other? I, I know. No and then uh, you speak about Dallas. I was in Dallas. Dallas. <laughs> Actually, little side note. Um, here locally, uh, the Texas Lotto. Did you, did you remember they had WrestleMania scratch offs? Yeah, yeah, I have one of those. Okay, well, it was a second chance drawing on that. So if you didn't win, you can send your unused tickets in, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I want a free trip for two to WrestleMania 32. Plane, mm-hmm. hotel. I had lunch. If you go look on my Instagram, you can see I got a picture with Lana and, and our truth. And there's a video of me kicking it with our truth, talking about Jiffy Cornbread. And Rusev has no idea what Jiffy Cornbread is. Um, <laughs> so I subsequently sent him Jiffy Cornbread and got a letter back from him. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it, I've been. Let's see, the first WrestleMania I went to was 17 in the Astrodome, mm-hmm. um, Rock was, versus Austin. And see, uh, what what year was that? Um, God, I have no idea. I can let's see here. Where's my Where's my production manager at? Golly, well, my wife should be taking care of that. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> um, I want to say like, I, oh, let's see. All right, WrestleMania seventeen. Seventeen. Who's got the better thing here? All right. 2001. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna right. say I was gonna say like 2002, yeah. but 2001. Right. So I had never been to a WrestleMania at that point, and I was just like, "It's in fucking Houston. I want to go." So 9/11 happened. Oh. <laughs> I was in Iraq, and this shit was going on, and I was so sad. So I, yeah. So damn, that went down, and then I was like, "All right." I got to go to a WrestleMania at least once in my life. So they went to New Orleans for 30. I was like, you fucking right. I'm going there. to that one. When Daniel Bryan won, won beat, beat, uh, beat everybody that night, beat Triple H, then he beat Randy Orton and Batista. Mm-hmm. That was also the night that the streak ended. You remember that? How yep. quiet the fucking place was? Like people weren't even sure what happened. And then they flashed it on the screen, 21 and 1, like, oh, shit. Yeah, because I can remember yeah. Paul Heyman putting his hands on his head. He's like, oh, my God, you did it. Yeah, that was a – I actually saw the guy, the kid with the big eyes that they show. Yeah. I saw him, like, three hours before, you know, and, like, we had a bullshit conversation about something. And then, sure enough, I'm like, oh, look, I fucking know that guy. Yeah. Um, so Yeah, actually, and then the second one I went to was 25, mm-hmm. which is probably one of the best WrestleManias it's the best one I've ever been to. Yeah, that's a Undertaker. Um, Undertaker Sean, Sean too. Oh, two. All right, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, 23, um, 24, and 25 is my favorites. Yeah, yeah. That's Fla- Flair, Flair retirement and um, Michaels and Undertaker one and two. Yeah, yeah. Great shows. Um, but, yeah, that one blew the – I felt sorry for it, for the uh, the main – I don't even remember the main event that night, to be perfectly honest. Um just because how can you go on after that performance you know mm. um 
And then we went to 30. 30 was in New Orleans. 30 was my wife's first WrestleMania, and, and I kind of tricked her into it. Um, I was like, honey, you want to go to New Orleans? She's like, fuck yeah. I'm like, yeah, we can eat. We can go to Bourbon Street. We can hang out. This and that. She's like, cool. yeah. I was like, we're going to go to WrestleMania. She's like, wait, what? Go where? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, my wife watches, bless her heart, she, she watches wrestling just to appease me. Exactly. She Same finds thing shit here. in it. Like, thankfully for Total Divas, because she can watch that, and she kind of, that gives her something to kind of get into, and, you know, the backstories and whatnot. She always likes to hear the chisma, the dirt about who's seeing who, so yeah. I tell her about Seth and Becky fucking now. She's all over that. She's loving that shit, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I tricked her into going, so she was tripping. She goes, I'm walking down Bourbon Street, and 20,000 people are doing a yes chant. I, I just don't get it. You know, it, it was phenomenal. It was the wildest thing I ever seen. That was the first time I heard the John Cena sucks chant at, at Raw yeah. after Mania that year. And we actually couldn't get a cab or Uber. It was so packed. So we're walking from the smoothie center back to the to the quarter. And like I said, there's 20, 30,000 people walking there all screaming, John Cena sucks. It was the best thing ever. It was, it was, I loved it. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, that one, the first time they went to New Orleans, I was just like, all right, that'll be my first one. And I think yep. I, I went on a deployment, but I got back just in time to watch it on TV, but I couldn't actually go to it. Ah. So, so your first one was what, 32? The first one for me was 31. In, 31. Uh, in okay. Santa Clara. Was, in California? Yeah, that was when uh, Seth Rollins cashed in. Seth cashed in, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. See? I had a, an idea, and, and not only am I 42, I'm 350 pounds of twisted seal and sex appeal. Yeah. So I don't like sweating. Mm-hmm. So open air stadium WrestleMania is, is not going to be on my list. <laughs> Even the one in, in New York, I was really almost going to because of climate. I was like, well, at least it'll be cool. But oh. then my wife was like, if it's raining, we ain't fucking staying, and I wasn't going to waste money on a show I wasn't going to see. Oh, so that, that, that was good. Uh, that was my fourth one. I went to that one. Oh, nice. And, and, nice. Uh, out of all four of the trips, that was probably the best experience for me. Just to show yeah. the whole just going. Yeah. I, I, let me tell you, starting with um, last year uh, in New Orleans, the production quality went so far up. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because they're saving money on regular shows, not using pyro and stuff, and they just yeah. went all out for this. But like the background, last year's in New York, that background was even better. Just that huge screen yeah. they could put anything they wanted on. I know. It, it, when we were sitting there waiting for everything to kick off, whatever, that shit looked whack as fuck. We was like, Bitch. Yeah, because it's just dark. Yeah, yeah like, I was like, man, this is what we getting? Just a damn fucking LED screen? <laughs> but once they start doing the effects yeah. and all that, but, everything. It, but when it, it came was, interactive, and then... You know, what's kind of cool is I always like to go back. I get back to the hotel. I'll watch it again. I don't yeah. care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and then you see, like, the 3D shit that they put, the shit flying in the air like they did yeah. in the Super Bowl and shit. But, it, yeah, it was, it was fun. I, by far, out of all the times that I've been, that, that's probably now, my best experience. I am really looking forward to the Royal Rumble at Minute Maid Park. Yeah, I am, I'll be there. I, I'll be there. We need to hook up, we hang out, do whatever there. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be an awesome show. Um, I'm not even trying to get on the floor because I want to see it. I know exactly where I want to sit. Mm-hmm. It's the third base side. That's that. I know exactly where I'm going to try to get tickets. I don't even give a damn. I just want to be in the building. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, it's not. Oh, Bregman, two run shot. Astros now lead eight six. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm watching the game. I'm doing everything. I'm smelling the wife cook spaghetti in there, and it's like, oh shit. So, yeah. um, but yeah. Any seat in Minute Maid is a good seat for a yeah. wrestling show when you think about it. Yeah, that's kind of like how the Toyota Center is. Yeah, yeah. Well, for for the first WrestleMania in New Orleans, I literally sat two rows from the last fucking row in the Superdome. Mm-hmm. It, it was. I, I took a souvenir light bulb home. If you know what I mean, like that's how <laughs> fucking a bird flew underneath me in the stadium. You know how fucking high you got to be for birds to fly underneath you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that I learned a lesson with that. So last year's WrestleMania, I went cheap on tickets. Yeah, yeah. I did. I was like, well, fuck it. I already, I already sat up here for one show, and it wasn't that bad. I had it on the network. I had like a ten second delay. So if I hear something, I just look at my phone. Yeah, and you know, it was kind of cool. Well, for some act of God, the seats, the cheap seats I bought this time. A, it was like a mile and a half up the fucking stairs. Yeah. Okay, so I was gassed by the time I got there. Okay, um, I'm a big guy. 
the stadium's old, so it lets you know the seats are a little narrow. You know, they're not built for burlesque people that are <laughs> around these days. Um, I, I don't know if New Orleans, was it New Orleans, New Orleans, yeah. New, New Orleans or skinny. <laughs> um, most Louisiana folks I know are a little bit fuzzy like me, so I don't know who the fuck designed that. But I squeezed my ass in the seat and I was fine. I was gassed. I was fuck it. There was a 12-year-old kid sitting in front of me, and I couldn't even get mad at him because he was so excited. He kept bouncing in his chair and hitting his fucking chair on the back on the, on my knees, right? Mm -hmm. So I watched the ladies' battle royal, the whole match like that, and I couldn't take it. So I went downstairs, told the wife, I'm going downstairs. I got to do something about this. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to find customer service. So I go down, and I find a little kiosk. And the lady, the lady's like being nice, but she's like, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And let me, you know, let me call somebody. So she walks off and I'm like, I'm never going to fucking see this lady again. You know, yeah. well, while I'm standing there, a fucking lady walking up with a WWE lanyard comes on. She's like, um, are you looking for me? I was like, yes, I am. I didn't give a fuck if I wasn't, but I had my opportunity. <laughs> and I thought I was like, look, the seats, I had bad knees. I've had three knee surgeries, blah, blah, blah. This and that. She goes, okay. Um, Stay right here. I'll be right back. She walks off. So I'm thinking, fuck, <laughs> that was the right lady, the right credentials. I should have fucking followed her. But no, now I'm waiting here. I'm never going to see her again. Right. And in the meantime, I hear the crowd. <sighs> oh, <sighs> I hear bumps being taken. I'm like, fuck, man. Well, about five minutes later, right about where I was about to say, fuck it. Just let me go up there and, and let me buy the kid a hot dog and tell him to sit the fuck down or something. I don't know. Some other dude comes up with a lanyard, except his lanyard's like twice the size. I'm like, okay, I'm fucking following this guy. So I go up to him, and um, I'm telling him my story, and he's looking at me, and he goes, man, I know you. And I'm like, oh, shit, my Z-list celebrity's going to fucking pay off, right? <laughs> well, no, as luck would have it, he's the rep that I dealt with on the trip I won in Dallas. And he's like, you're back at WrestleMania. And I'm like, yeah, it's my fifth one. He's like, oh, shit, high five. That's an important one. I'm like, yeah. And my seat sucked. He went, don't say another word. He filtered through about 50 tickets he had. And he goes, here, go right now. The show's starting. Man. So I, being the fat husband I am, I call my wife. Hey, come down. I'm not walking the fuck back up there. Bring the belt. And I'm walking with a title belt, too, which I'll never do again. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, I learned that from uh, the first WrestleMania I went to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll take it to Access. You know, I'm not taking it to WrestleMania. I'm not taking it to another show. But yeah. I digress. That's another podcast. Um, so, yeah, she comes down. We go. We're sitting dead center. If you go back and look at some of my photos, um, dead center, middle of the ring, one riser up. It was the best seats I've ever had for WrestleMania. They were plush. They were wide. And we were the only fuckers in the row. So Word. sometimes, you know, I officially moved my celebrity status up to Y list at that point. Um, you know, I'm no longer a crumb snatching Z lister. I am a Y lister. <laughs> so I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, man. Now um, you going to Tampa. Yes. Well, like I said, it's open air, man. I, I don't know. You know, yeah. um, I really, I have a lot of friends that live in Toronto mm -hmm. and I was really trying to get up there for SummerSlam. So if I could pull off a SummerSlam and Toronto trip, I probably won't go to Mania, okay. um, which my wife will be fine with. We'll go to bait. We take our vacation in April. It's either Mania or something the fuck else. So she'll be happy that it's something the fuck else this year. So, you know. <laughs> Every once in a while, you know, you got to pick your battles, man. I've been married. I got married, but God bless my wife. She's stuck with me. I got married on October 10th, 2010. That's 10, 10, 10 for y'all folks. Mm -hmm. Actually, I got married at 10 minutes after 10. I wasn't fucking around. I didn't want to forget my anniversary for shit. So 10, yeah. 10, 10, easy to remember. Um, but God bless her. She stuck by me through all this crazy hat shit and wrestling. And I mean, fuck, I don't know if you can look over here. You see the wrestling belts? Oh, my wife would kill me. <laughs> Yeah, I need to. I'll hook you up, bro. There's actually another group I'm in. They do raffles. Okay, I own seven titles. Each one was won on a raffle that I've only spent at the most twenty five bucks on. Word. I'm yeah, down, I'm down so, for that. Yeah, I got a universal title. I got a smoke and skull stone cold belt. I have a WWF attitude era belt. I have a winged eagle, the Andre belt. Which is a big motherfucker that the that when Andre beat Hogan in '87, they had to make a belt bigger for him. I got that. 
I have an original 1986 WWF Hulk Hogan title. And, of course, the granddaddy of them all for me, the 10 pounds of gold, the NWA strap, the oh, Ric yeah. Flair, Harley Race. You know, that that is wrestling to me right there. So, But, yeah, man, you know, it, it's just a madcap fucking bunch of shit that I'm into. And, you know, hell. It can't take it with me, so I'm gonna fucking ball out right now and let my kids fight over it when I'm gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was mad as hell because, like, well, I wasn't mad or nothing, but like, um, when I went to New York, my homeboy he met me down, he met me up there, and he was just like, "Hey, man, I got this old uh, John Cena spinner belt, man. I don't do shit with it. It's just like in my garage. Do you want it?" And I was like, "You fucking right, I want it." <laughs> yeah, and um, I had to preface my wife. I was like, "Hey, I'm going to WrestleMania." And I'm coming back with a belt. I just want you to know that I didn't spend any money on it. Somebody giving it to me. <laughs> right. Because I thought oh. I bought the first one because uh, I got the um, the current WWE championship. Okay. You got the black strap. Yeah. See, I got I got the universal title. So, damn. My first WrestleMania, Santa Clara. Mm. I mean, stars aligned. I mean, it was a surprise trip. I, I had no intention of going. My mom, you know, sprung for the whole thing. She's like, it's your oh, birthday. Nice. It, it was on my birthday. Oh. So sweet. March 29th. So she was like, it's your birthday. I know you always talk about going and everything. And I want to do this for you. So she sent me out there and you know, all that cool shit, you know. Especially you had always tried to go and something came up. Like mm-hmm. that, that was, you know, shout out to mom there. Way yeah. to go. I almost died going there, but that's a whole different story. But um, made it there, and I'm in the access, and I'm just walking by the whole. You've seen it before if you've been there. The whole thing, the wall full of belts they got, and I'm just sitting there and I'm walking by it because the one I really wanted, the very first one I wanted to get, was the fucking the big gold belt. The guy, yeah, the WCW yeah. championship. I wanted that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but um. They not too long went to the the WWE title that they got now, and it just looked so good sitting up there on that shelf. It was just shiny, and the leather was big too, you know. Yeah, and um, like I held it like three times before I actually bought it. I I went up to the counter. I was like, "Let me see that." I held it. I moved it up and down. I was like, "Oh, all right, here, take this shit away from me." (laughs) Walk away, walk away, walk away. And around this time, the Apple Watch came out, the first one. So um, I wanted that Apple Watch. But this belt costs as much as that Apple Watch, and I was just, and she, my wife was already on the fence about the Apple Watch. She was like, "I I get you the Apple Watch." So I'm sitting there, I'm calling her, I'm on the phone with her. I was like, "Hey, I'm at Access. They got all this merchandise and everything here. I know you like Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose and all that. You want me to get you a shirt?" She's like, "Oh yeah, if you can find because they had the I can and I will shirt for Roman Reigns." And she's like, if you can find that one, I, I want that one. I was like, all right, cool. Uh, what do you think the kids want? Just, you know, bullshitting around, trying to get to the point. Uh, you know, you know, Naya might want the, uh, John Cena shirt or whatever, yada, yada, yada. I was like, so, um, they got this belt here. <laughs> you know, you know how I always talk about wanting to get the, um, the, the belt or whatever. And, uh, she's like, all right, how much it costs? I was like, well, you you know the Apple Watch I'm on. It's probably about the same. She's like, that's not telling me how much it costs. How much it costs? Because she just wanted to hear the price come out of my mouth. And I was like, <laughs> it was like four hundred twenty dollars. She's like, how much? I was like four hundred and twenty dollars. And she's like, it, like silent, just like that. And she's like, you know what? This is your first WrestleMania. It is your birthday. Go ahead and get it. I was like, all right. And I hung up. <laughs> Well, you couldn't get over there fast enough to check out, could you? Man, I was like, she was like, when I heard the pause, I was like, fuck, she's going to say no. And yeah, she's like, yeah, it's getting shot down when, right now. When, yeah. she, when she said, well, I was like inching all the way to the counter There's and shit. Hope. I was like, well, all right, I'm putting my hand up. I'm just signaling to the guy in the back like, hey, get that one right there. <laughs> and she let, me, awesome. she let me get that motherfucker, man. See, we were at Access. Before I had any of these, okay, I, I've all, I've accumulated these within like the last. So, and I was looking real hard at that Attitude Era belt. That's my, you know, I loved it. Just it's big. It was stone cold. You know, looking hard. And and the wife was like, right there with me on the fence. And finally, she's like, just get it. And I'm the kind of guy I have instant buyer's remorse. I same, mean, same. I, I can buy fucking groceries and feel bad afterwards 
knowing that I need to eat with my big ass, but still feel bad that I went and dropped two hundred dollars. You know, like yeah. oh god, oh my god, I do. It. I mean, anything. I'll buy a hat and be like. I don't need another. I have 800 hats. Why did I spend 40? And especially now with this fuckery they're pulling with this $45 hat shit yeah. everywhere and lids ain't got a discount nowhere. You can only use it in store. Don't even get me started. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and, and and I talked myself out of that belt. She was like, go ahead and get it. Fuck it. We're on a trip, whatever. And I was like, nope. Uh -uh. Fuck it. And so I ended up taking like, we went to like some nice ass dinner out there or some shit. And, eh, whatever. But it kind of worked out because as the wrestling belt gods would have it, I now own seven of these bad boys. So, yeah, I mean, it, I, I, that buys your more shit, man. I, the same way every time. It's just like if I spend like a hundred dollars on something or whatever. I mean, I'm just you know whatever. I'm just like, man, you know how much little shit I could have bought with that same hundred dollars? I just bought one thing. <laughs> the, the worst is like when you go, and that's why I don't fuck around at, at Walmart and Target and all that bullshit because I can go in there for Q-tips. I need Q-tips. I'm gonna go. I know it's in the front of the store. I got to walk past this bullshit, get the Q-tips. But on the way out, I see the George Foreman sweet tea ice maker 3000 some bullshit <laughs> clock radio. I don't need it. Never knew I needed it. But because it's 1999, I'm going to get that motherfucker. You know, and next thing you know, I'm in the checkout and I got $120 worth of junk. I got to blow up fucking teddy bear. It's a sprinkler or some stupid shit. You know, just. And I'm in the car. I'm reading the receipt. You know, when you got to hand the receipt to the lady to, to yeah. let her highlight it. You know, whatever. Yeah. I she highlights the price, and it's like they tent, they they do it to me again. Like, look what you spent, stupid. You know, like, oh god, I got three bags and I spent 120 bucks. What the fuck. <laughs> You know, that's my dilemma. Anyway. That's my dilemma every time I'm going to Walmart, and I'm always in that bitch, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what I say, man. That's why I always say I ain't going to take it with me, and I don't want my kids to fight over it, so I'm just going to spend it now. Like, yeah. I set them up. Like, my kids, I tell them, look, I gave y'all all. Everybody gets the same chance. You get to go to college. You know, you get one degree on my dime. After that, you're on your own. You can't go on Dr. Phil and blame me for shit. You know what I mean? Like, you, 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 you if you get a bachelor's and you fuck that up, well, hell, I can't help you. <laughs> yeah, like, like fuck your couch. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Once you get, I got one baby girl. God bless her. She graduates high school next year. Mm -hmm. I said, baby, what college do you want to go to? You want to stay local? You know, I get you a car if you stay local. If you go somewhere else, you don't get a car. You know. Yeah. Dad, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to waste your money. I was like, well, word. All right. What well, What's your career path? I want to be a mortician. Ooh. At first, I was kind of taken back. Yeah, but at the but same time, she always things. Yeah. They get paid really well. Mm -hmm. And she always going to be in business. Work. Yeah. There's always work. People going to be dying until the time's over. Mm -hmm. So, and then my youngest daughter, she's a bit of a eclectic sort. You know, she kind of walks to the beat of her own drum anyway. So, it's not really that far-fetched when you think about it. And then I found out that one of the best schools in the nation for that is in Oklahoma. So, that's like, you know, North Dallas. It ain't that far, so... That's what she wants to do. My middle son didn't want to didn't want to go to college, so we hooked him up. He learned how to weld. You know, he'll always have a job. Word. I mean, that was just, uh, I was just talking to the boy about that. Now I was like, "Hey, dog, you need to be worried about getting out of high school." I said, like, "I don't give a shit what you do after." I mean, if you want yeah, to go to college, college ain't for everybody. I yeah. like. He said he didn't want to wait. If you tell me. If you come up and say, don't spend $20,000, I'm going to waste it. Hell, I got no problem but to shake your hand. You know, like, mm -hmm. it just ain't for everybody. I went to college and dropped out with 12 hours left. Yeah, I know. But then I was going for a teaching degree, and I found out how much teachers made. So, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. That'll be a thing when I retire. It'll be a labor of love thing. I'll, 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 I've already made my mind up. When I finally retire from what I do now, um, I'll work in the legal profession. When I finally get tired of fucking with these lawyers and shit, I'll go finish my degree up and go teach history in some high school and you know go Joe Carter on some fucking kid. <laughs> yeah, because like the boy, he he uh, got in his head that he gonna go in the military. I was like, dog, you keep fucking around. You don't get a GED or I mean not a GED. You don't get a fucking diploma. They ain't gonna take you. You can't ass. just walk in the military no more. Yeah, not no more. Nah. <laughs> uh, back in my day, back when I graduated, yeah, they take anybody and everybody. Now, no, yeah. it, it, man, you see what you're dealing with in the military? It, it's high tech shit. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have a little snap. Mm -hmm. 
They even um at a, one point in time there was just like if you freaking didn't have a um a GED or whatever they would pay for your GED and yeah. whatnot to get you in. But they don't even. They do wanted that shit warm no bodies, more. man. At one point, you know. Yeah. They don't even do that shit no more. No, nah, I mean it's highly selective. I, I I had a friend that basically got shot down. They told him thanks, but no thanks. Like damn. Uh, but yeah. But you know, shout out, shout out to those man. You know, uh, my brother served, and and uh, you know that's what makes makes us be able to do shit like this. So shout out to our servicemen. Hats off to those who gave it all. Uh, Memorial Day was yesterday, so yeah. Um, my thoughts go out to to those that, that gave the ultimate sacrifice and and put themselves over their country. So you know, shout out to them. Shout out to all all military first responders, firefighters, even them sorry ass cops. Shout out to them too. So. <laughs> well, it was funny about that. You was like hats off, and you didn't even take your hat off. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> I know I'm fucking with hat, hat only comes off certain times, man. Not even when it's you know missing nasty time. The hat don't come off. Oh man, man. That, that that's that's your signature move, man. You gotta keep the hat on. Look, it, it, it's like over the top, man. You know, I gotta, I yeah. gotta, you know, once Turn I it backwards. Yeah, you know, it's all Cinderella. You know, it all turns into well, you know, that's that's for the um, late night. Yeah, I got you. I understand. <laughs> No, no, honey, I'm not talking about our sex life. Really, it's cool. No, it's just. <laughs> so what's next, man? What, what's what's next on the agenda as far as your lid collection go and, you know, whatnot? Well, I got what I've officially started calling the uh, Big Dave Cat Cave going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got some ideas on some modifications I want to do here. Right now, the majority bulk of my collection is in these fucking, like, tote things here. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Team Fitted up top there. Team Fitted. Um, so I have these cedar fucking shelving shits in here. So I want to do something, put some shelves and maybe some sliding glass. Um, I'm actually about to do a purge of my collection and get rid of some. I'm going to kind of steer my collection into more of what I want. The hard to get stuff, the yeah. old stuff, the, the vintage stuff. Mm-hmm. Still with Houston stuff. I have a bunch of non-Houston stuff that just sits up there, and I'd rather it go to somebody that'll wear it. Yeah. I mean, Cubs and you know other sports teams, um, you know. Uh, so I'll be I'll be putting them up for to get rid of them and move out to have more money to buy more hats because they keep dropping them as quick as I can turn around. Um, I, my Game of Thrones hat ain't even here yet, and the fucking show is over. So you know, whatever. Um, the way they drop hats, eh, hell. I, I have to work an expense account just to fucking keep keep buying hats, man. <laughs> you know, I actually applied for a part time job at Lids, and they basically told me, "Dude, you're way overqualified." And I'm like, "I just want to work for hats, really." Like, yeah, you, I mean, you pay, I, you pay me in gift cards, you get the money right back. You know, I want I'm, the hat and the discount. You yeah, know, I, I felt that way too because, like, um, for a while, I'm, uh, well, why? I mean, I still play video games, but like, I used to be really into video games, and I wanted to when they started doing GameStop and all this shit. I wanted to work at GameStop so fucking bad, but you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't take me. Yeah, I was I, I was like, wait a minute, I probably know more about caps and cap culture than your fucking district manager, and you don't. Uh, all right, whatever. And I'm friends with the DM. I, I fucked around and told him I was like. What the fuck, dude? He goes, I didn't even see your application, bro. I'd have, I'd have hired you just so I could fire you. Yeah. So, <laughs> friends, what are you going to do, right? Uh, but yeah, man, Um, now it, it's kind of a period where basketball season's over, so it's the it's the yearly rotation, the seasonal rotation. All that, all the um, Rockets caps and, and jerseys get washed, or well, the jerseys get washed, the caps get brushed off, put up. Um, Astros caps are getting in full rotation. Um, I got a couple of wrestling caps I always keep around. Um, but you know, I, I, I try not to wear a cap, overwear a cap, but I found myself wearing them Travis Scott joints a lot. Yeah. Let me see right there. Yeah. I have all three. I have two sets, one to put up and one to wear. And that black Astros hat, I, I wear at least once a week. And I really hate that. I, I don't want to wear a cap out, but. It's fly right now. It's Astro season, and black goes with everything. You know, shout out to my my t shirt guy, my boy Hamilton Porter. Shouting out to the to the Astros there. Word, you know, that's Sandlot. You killing um, me, Smalls? That, <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, that's that's you know I don't really have a direction with the caps, man. It kind of I buy what I like. Um, I'm not one of these guys that are 
Oh, it was made in USA. It was made in Bangladesh. I, it was made in Mordor. I don't give a fuck. So <laughs> it fits good, you know? If it fits right and looks good, fuck it. You know, yeah. um, my caps are made in China. The ones that I made, I mean, what nothing I could do about it. That's just where the sweatshop was. You know, yeah. the, 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 the 11 year old girls need to work. You know, I sh- that sounded horrible. I should have said, yeah, yeah it, there's not just, edit cut it yeah. yeah there's no cleaning that up um, <laughs> uh what else we got coming up finally this year i finally after nine long years finally have texan season tickets i've been on a waiting list forever well, damn. so i'll be back at the uh, texans games this year the problem when i get out there i like to tailgate okay yeah. i take tv i take the the drinks, I'm not a big drinker. I, I bounced for like eight, year, eight years, so there was a lot of nights coming home drunk and fucked up, and so I really don't drink no more. So I'll take a bunch of sodas, some water, shitload of food, and by the time I do all that, I don't want to put my shit up and go inside, so I give the tickets away a lot. So um, football season, holla at me, man. We'll go to a football game for sure. Word uh, down. I don't even know. I think we play the Saints this year, maybe. If we do, definitely. Uh, uh, I, I tried to jump on that. Uh, but yeah, man. Um so finally, I got Texans. Um, Astros are in full effect. Try to get to as many games as I can. Um, I work like ten minutes from the park, so sometimes if I can, I try to sneak out and catch a, a day game. Um, it's always good to invite the boss. You can just hey, you want to go to the baseball game? Sure. Okay, it's at one o'clock. We have to leave now. Fuck it, let's go. Well, <laughs> I'm with the boss. You know. Um, but yeah, that that you know, I'm always looking for shit to hang up in this room. Uh, but I need to. I, I get a bit. Hordish? Is that a word? Hordish? Yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, and, and so I, I have to purge. I have to get rid of shit just because it, it, it ends up stacking up. Somebody gives me some shit, I don't want to give it away. Like, I got a display from Lids, and instead of giving it away, I just covered the year up. There you go. It's <laughs> Very well. And, and it holds the world champion, 2017 world champion Astros caps. I mean, come on. You know. Uh, there is um, one or two caps that are missing in your collection that I can name out right now. And that's uh, any of the random rambles with Rob hats that's on I need, robcast.com. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I will definitely, before long, you will see one on Big Dave 713 just for uh, for you, homie. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll definitely knock one off, and it ain't even new era. So you'll have like a really rare cap in my collection. Exactly, that, that's what this is all about. I need to be on the exclusive, exclusive. <laughs> that's right. You, you'll you'll get a spot inside the, the good shit here. You know what I'm saying? And, and inside the uh, wardrobe there, man. Word. That's actually crazy story. I bought that for my wife. Yeah, it's some shit called Tiger Maple. I don't know if you kind of see the oh, tiger. So, uh, yeah, so it's just, that's the. the it's extinct. The fucking tree doesn't exist no more. Um, my grandma lives in a kind of what to do neighborhood here, and one of her neighbors was moving out and didn't want to move it. And he said, "You want to buy this?" And I was like, mm, "Sure." And he's like, "Well, give me a thousand dollars." And I was like, uh, "No, I have fifty in my pocket." Well, I paid like two grand for it, and I was like, "Well, good luck moving it." Um, and so he took fifty bucks for it. I brought it home to give it to the wife, and it, it never made it to her room. Word. See, so, yeah, you go, so you gonna put me in the Narnia closet and shit? Yeah, the Narn. You go inside Narnia, bro. I mean, uh, watch <laughs> out. The, the the lion's cool, but the witch, she's a bitch. So watch out, man. No, right, okay. Cool. okay. Now, uh, I mean, I think this is a good place as any to wind it down here or whatever. But before we go, you know, we done shout it out heavily. But let everybody know where they can find you on all your social media accounts. On all my platforms, man. I am fortunate. I am the original, often imitated, never duplicated. At Big Dave 713. That's on Instagram and Twitter. Find me on Facebook, David Gebhardt. That's G E B H A R D as in David, T as in Tom. Um, you know, you can find me across there. I'll chop it up with you. But beware, if you poke the bear, you might get scratched back. I don't I, I don't sugarcoat shit. Um I, I speak from the cuff. And if I see you in violation, I'm gonna throw a flag. <laughs> <laughs> flag on the play flag on the play man word man i appreciate you giving me your time let me in uh behind the curtain and everything let anytime me- man i feel like we i bounced around so much that we probably could have another two or three shows you know what i'm saying so anytime um you got some time and you need to fill in a spot man give me a holler i'm mm-hmm. here in the cat cave and i'll be 
dicking around here somewhere unless there's an Astros game on. So yeah, you haven't tweeted in a long time. <laughs> you know, my, my my daughter tells me my tweet game is is, is lacking. Um, oh, very very much so. Uh, I don't like being. I need the Twitter Plus. Twitter people. I guess I need to tweet more to get Twitter Plus, but I need more characters. Okay. I'll try to be quick. Well, and, nah, you do. See, that's my problem when texting, and my wife hates it. Mm -hmm. I'll text, and after I hit send, I immediately think of 35 other things that I wanted to say in that sentence. Mm -hmm. So I'll proceed to keep texting. She's like, son of a bitch, will you just stop? Yeah. So that's kind of why I don't tweet, because I can't get it all out. Well, and then by the time I think of it, it's too much. Yeah, it's, so, two, it's 280 characters now, though. Does it? Look, I, I, 200. Now, two, ain't nothing been 280 about me since, like, third grade, bro. So, <laughs> you know, it's just... Yeah, you know, I'll try. Um, I am trying. I'm heavy in IG. I love IG. Yeah, I'm same, old. Same. I still love Facebook. Um, it's where all my old friends are. Uh, and then on Twitter, I, I run across my daughter and shit. And I, 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 well, well, I mean, with your uh, IG or whatever, since that's your your, your platform of At choice. Big Dave seven one three. Yeah, um, you can link that to your Twitter. So whatever you post on Instagram, it'll automatically go to Twitter. Oh, see, I'm learning shit. See, not only is the show informative, but you can learn something. Way to go, Rob. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, man, one thing that I always like to say before I leave and cut off, it's a quote from the legendary Bob Marley, and I try to live my life by it every day. Live the life you love and love the life you live, man. Thanks for having me on, Rob. Word. And that was the homie Big Dave from the 713. I ain't talked to him in a while because, like, truth be told, um, all these past episodes has been I've been posting and everything. I recorded them all in a batch. So it's just been reordering them all, putting them in different order, see who come out here and where. And I had to slingshot some in the front of some of the others and everything. So out of my stash I had, this is like the second to last episode. So, I mean, some of the stuff that you may have heard in here might have been dated. That's why I kind of try to refrain from asking, you know, current time era freaking questions and whatnot, <laughs> you know. Cause, um, I don't never know when the episode gonna be out. And I remember a while back, he even hit me up and was like, Hey, man, when my episode gonna come out? Did, did you throw it in the trash? Is it not good enough <laughs> or whatever? And I had to assure him that, Hey, man, this shit is coming out. I swear. So yeah. But, um, great dude. You know, we both here in H Town and it's, it's a couple of people here that I, I talk with on the internet that live here in Houston. And it's almost like, is anybody else that I talk to that's from another state and shit because Houston is so goddamn big. It's just like for me to make the journey to go. And I, and I think I even said it the last episode, but historically, I mean, the reference of how big Houston is. I have a brother that live on the south side. I live in the north side. And for me to drive from my house to his house is almost an hour in the same goddamn city. So there you go. I mean, in this depends on traffic too so it can be over an hour <laughs> but yeah we gonna make that thing happen though me he he is missing one key essential um hat from his collection though and i, I poked at him about it too he don't have a random realms of rob hat up in there you don't have one of mine in there but <laughs> i can understand i might have to give that to him since he was gracious enough to give me his time to sit down and talk on the show with me so yeah, big shout outs to Big Dave. Um, yeah, some changes coming. Um, I don't quite know what they are yet. Once I get the, once I get these, uh, aforementioned, uh, old episodes up out of the way, you might hear a little bit of the change. I mean, it's nothing dramatic, but you'll know it when you hear it. Um, still a couple of live events coming up. Uh, August 31st, we're going to be hanging out at the uh, Southern Star Brewery in Conroe, Texas. I still don't know what fucking time that's going to be. I just know the 31st, I'll be there bullshitting. So if you're listening now, I mean, hit me up, uh, be monitoring freaking Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I'll be sure to shoot some things out there. I mean, it, it's not meant to be a giant event or whatever. I just know. I, what I was just saying a little while ago is some local people that I've met that live here in Houston and uh we gonna meet up and just shoot the shit for a little bit. So if you wanna come shoot the shit for a little bit, you're more than welcome to come by. Um so that's here on the thirty first. Then um 
freaking damn I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now I'm, I'm hungry I, I'm thinking about food visions of uh, chicken legs are dancing through my head but uh, October 18th through the 20th the pandemic tour is uh, rolling through H-Town at the NRG Center so I'll be there for that uh, November 2nd and 3rd I'll be in Atlantic City New Jersey for the J1 Con and October uh, October fuck November 16th. It'll be here at the Bar Bohemian H Town for the second annual H Town Podfest. Look in the show descriptions, man. I got links and addresses and times and dates and ways to get tickets if you're interested. All in the show description. I don't know if people are using this show description because I don't get no freaking voicemails to my voicemail number no more, which is uh, 304 825 5762. Nobody leaving me voicemail, sending me questions or nothing. So I don't know if people are reading the show descriptions. So I'm imploring you to read the show descriptions to get more information. Because, you know, I, I know sometimes you listen to this audio platform and you just kind of it's kind of hard to try to type something down in your phone or maybe write something down that I'm saying or rewinding it uh, freaking th- three or four times to get what I'm saying. But you can just look down in the show description and it's there. It's not moving. You can just look at it. <laughs> do what you need to do um, and that's it man uh, more episodes to come I appreciate you listening uh, I'm kind of mad at Chris Van Vliet because he was in the H-Town and I'm in H-Town we couldn't even make that crisp high five but hey I understand he a busy man he a globe trotter baby um, yeah I love you guys you're awesome if you need to hear that and you can follow me on Twitter at it's B Rob, I T S B R O B, and the show that you're listening to, the Random Realms of Rob, has his own Twitter account that you can follow at Three R Show, and you can follow on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in Three R Show or the Random Realms with Rob. If you're on Instagram, just use hashtag Three R Show because if you put in at Three R Show, it's gonna take you to this punk motherfucker that don't even use his goddamn account. So, uh, yeah, look at type in the random rounds with Rob or hashtag Walmart log because I'll be walking around in the Walmart getting into shenanigans and whatnot. Not to the level of uh, my house is dirty on Instagram. He, he getting to all kind of shenanigans. I'm trying to get this dude on this show. Maybe we can even do an interview up in the Walmart getting into some of his shenanigans. But anyway, uh, so hit me up on randomrobcast.com. Write some reviews, baby. I'm on the hunt for some reviews. Leave me five stars and whatnot. And yeah, high five. I love you. Bye-bye. See you next time.